Hi guys, welcome back to another lesson. So in the previous lesson, we created endpoints to create to-dos, uh, to grab the current dos from the current user. Um, and in this uh, in this lesson, we're going to look at updating to-do. So we're going to mark uh, we're going to create endpoints to mark them as complete, uh, mark them as incomplete, update the to-do content, delete a to-do, and then we're also going to tidy up um, any other API routes. I want to make some changes to the stuff we've done on the auth routes. Um, just to keep that updated um, and ready to move into the client work, hopefully in the next lesson. Um, so we'll move back to our code here and I'll zoom in for you guys. Um, so I've left a little le note here in the uh, terminal to uh, make sure we push our work to Git. So we should be doing this, I mean, as we've talked about already, kind of every 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 time we finish a lesson, we should be pushing to GitHub. So I'm going to do git add full stop to add all the current changes. Git commit to minus M. Um, I'm going to start. I'm going to put the message as start work on to dos. And then I'm just going to go git push origin main to push that to our GitHub account. Okay, so now that's running. I'm uh, now that's uh, pushed to Git. I'm going to do npm run server. Oh, no. What, what am I meant to be running? npm. Let's have a look at our package.json. I've already that should be working. npm run server. Oh, okay, I made a typo there. No worries. Let's close that. Okay, so yeah, this is the previous route we worked on, the um, get current to dos, and we are now going to copy and paste all of our uh, root descriptions up here. And this one is going to be a put root. So I'm going to update that to put here. API slash to dos. Um, and that's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to look at, uh, for this route, we're going to look at marking it as complete. So I'm going to pass in a to-do ID. That's what we're going to pass into the route. This is how we do a root parameter here, a request parameter with the colons. Um, and it's going to be slash complete. And it's going to be mark a to-do as complete. So what we're going to do is make a router dot put. Inside our quotes, we're going to do slash colon to do ID and that's again how what like I just said it's how we do um, request parameters and complete so what we're going to do is we in our um, HTTP request we'll pass in to do ID in the parameter there we need the requires auth middleware and then we're going to open up an asynchronous function with request and response I'm going to do our classic try catch error blocks I'm going to console log the error and then we're going to do return res.status 500.send error.message. Okay, so in, inside this route, we're going to be passed um, the to do ID. So we need to grab that to do from the database to check that it exists, to check that this ID is a real to do. So we're going to do const to do equals await to do dot find one. We're going to return one. We want to make sure that the to do belongs to the user. So we're going to check for a to do that has the user of request.user.id dot underscore id and the id of that to do needs to be request dot params dot to do id which is what this which is this parameter here so we now need to do a, an error catch if there is no to do if there's no to do returned from the database then we need to return a res dot status of 404 so not found JSON error, and then we're going to put could not find to do. And then we also want to check, seeing as this route is marking it as complete, we want to check that the, the, the to do that we returned isn't already marked as complete. So we're going to do if to do dot complete. So if to do dot complete dot complete is true, we also want to return an, an error saying res.status is going to be 400, so a bad request. And the JSON error is going to be to do is already complete. We can't mark an already complete to do as complete. Okay, so that's all we need to do for the checks for the error checking. And now we need to actually update the to do. So I'm going to create a new constant variable called updated to do. And we're going to do await to do, so the to do model, find one and update. We're going to use so inside the first uh, parameter that we set we that we provide to an update um, mongoose function 
we need to first provide the query. So that's the same query as up here. So it's going to be, and let's uh, space this out slightly nicer. Let's close that again. There we go. So we need to do the user, request.user ID as above, and the underscore ID of request.params.to do ID. And then we want to tell, we then as the second parameter, tell the database what we want to update. So we want to update complete to true. And then we also have the completed at time, which we want to provide a new date to. So that's going to add um, the date we mark it as complete. And then as the third parameter, this is, this is an options parameter. I'm going to open up another object. I'm going to set new to true. And that basically returns the updated to do um, in, this, in this variable here. Otherwise, we just get the old version returned to us. And then we can do return res.json updated to do. So I'm going to save that. And the, what we want to do is we want to give that a go. I'm going to go to Postman. I'm going to see if I'm... I'm first going to go to the uh, login route, the HTTP localhost 5000 API author login. I'm just going to log in to make sure that I'm logged in as the current user. I'm going to get the current to-dos. Do I have any? Yes, I do have some. So we've got this one here, do my homework. I'm going to copy the ID from here. I'm going to open up a new tab here. Localhost API forward slash, um, what is it, to-dos forward slash. We then want to paste in our ID, which is the request.params.todo ID and complete. And that's not a get request, it's a put request. So I've got my auth um, token set here. So this should, if we've done everything right, work properly. Okay, so I've marked that as complete. And you can see that the R to do is now being returned as complete. We've now got a completed at time as well. And if I send this again, we should hit a block saying it's already marked uh, an error saying it's already marked as complete. Perfect. So that's that endpoint done. Um, we then want to do the same to mark it as incomplete. So say we have a complete to do that we accidentally marked as complete. We may want to in the future go back and um, mark it as incomplete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the description here. Put APIs to do to do ID and then it's going to be incomplete. Mark a to do is incomplete. And then we're going to do another router.put request. It's going to be very similar layout. So it's going to be um, the to do ID. So that's incomplete. So it's essentially a copy of the route above, just doing the opposite work. However, I am going to rewrite it just for clarity anyway. Instead of copying and pasting it. So we want to get to the to do again. Oh, we need our try catch block. Return res.status 500. You can copy that from above if you really want to, but for tutorial sake, I'll type it out. And then inside of our try block, we want to get the ID as previously, basically the same as previous. Await to do dot find one. And we're finding one with the user of request.user.id. So the current user we're logged in as and an ID of request.params.todo ID, which is the param we're sending in. And the same as last time, if no to do, return res.status 404.json error could not find to do. And this time we want to do the opposite check. So last time we did if to do dot complete, but instead we want to add an explanation mark. So if it is not complete, we want to return res.status 400 JSON. And the error message is going to be to do is already complete. And then again, we want to update the to do. So const updated to do equals await to do dot find one and update. Open up some round brackets. So the first one, we, the first parameter we pass in is the query. So it's the same as above, user request.user.id. And the ID of the to-do we want to return is the request.params.todo ID. And then we do another comma. And this is our, what we want to update. So we want to set complete as false. 
And we also want to reset the date to null. So completed at now becomes null. So we don't want that date in there anymore seeing as it's no longer marked as complete. And then in the options, we're going to pass through new as true to get our new um, to do out of this endpoint. And then return res.json updated to do. Let's save that. And let's go back to Postman. And we are now going to change this from complete to incomplete. We send that request. You can now see that our to do is come back as complete false and the completed at is null. If I do to slash complete again, we can see that it recompletes it for us, gets a new completed that timer. And let's again, one, one more time, mark it as incomplete. It, it marks it as incomplete again. And then if I send it again, it should say to do is already incomplete. So that's brilliant. That's all set up and ready to go. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to have the ability to um, delete a um, to do item. So I'm going to copy and paste the root descriptions up here. We're not, this time going to be making a delete request. And we're just going to do API slash to do slash to do ID. And it's going to be delete a to do. Actually, instead of doing a delete, I'm instead going to do an update first. So we're going to update. Um, we're going to instead do a put request and we're going to update a to do. I forgot about updating the content of a to do. So let's not do the delete first. We'll do that last. So we're going to do a router.put request. It's going to be to slash to do ID, which is a request parameter. It requires auth again. It's an async request response. And we need our try catch blocks. And then inside of our try, we are this time, so um, we are going to be updating the to-do. So by updating the to-do, I just mean we're going to change the content of it. So it might be do do your homework to, and we might update it to do my homework tomorrow or something like that. So again, we need to fetch the to-do to check that it exists, await to-do.find1. It's a bit repetitive, this bit. You can copy and paste if you want from above. Request.user.underscore.id. And the ID of the to-do we want to return is the request.params.todo ID. And again, if no to-do, return res.status404, then the JSON error of um, could not find to-do. Okay. Um, right, so seeing as we're updating the to-do, we still need to validate the um, the content that we're passed through. So we've got a to-do validation file up here. It validates the data.content. We also need to validate it to make sure that the new updated content they're sending through is still valid. So we're going to do const, and then we're going to destructure with curly braces. And we're going to take is valid and errors from the function validate to-do input. And we're going to pass through the request.body. And then if our update is invalid, so if is invalid, we're going to return res.status 400 and the errors returned from that. If not, we're going to do like we did last time where we are going to update the to-do. So const updated to-do. So if is valid, you know, await to-do, find one and update. So the query comes first. So the query will be request.user.underscore.id. The ID will be request.params.todo.id. And what we're going to update this time is the content. So the content is going to equal request.body.content. And like last time, we still want to return new as true. And then after we've written that out, we want to return res.json updated to do. Okay, so now we've written that endpoint. We're going to go and check that, that that works as well, that we can update. So this is a put request. Uh, I'm going to mark it as complete. Okay, uh, let's copy and paste this string here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to make a new tab. Help if I copied it. Copy this, make a new tab. It's going to be a put request. 
and it's just going to be to the ID. We don't need the slash complete in the end. And then we go to the body tab, I'm going to go form encoded, and the new content is going to be wash the car. Click send. You can see that the content is now updated. Let's change it to wash the cars multiple and check that it updates again. Wash the cars multiple and it's updated again. So our update route now works, which is brilliant. So we've got our update route. We're going to copy and paste this again. And this time we are after the delete to do. Uh, we're after, we need to make an endpoint to delete the to do's. So delete a to do. And that endpoint is going to be um, to the same to the same endpoint as the put, but a delete instead. So router dot delete. It's going to be forward slash colon request. Oh, not request to do ID. Need requires auth, and it's going to be an asynchronous function request response. And we need our try catch block. So inside our catch, console log VR again, return res.status 500.send error.message. So again, repetitive I know, but I'm going to type it out. You can again copy and paste it. I'm going to fetch the to do to make sure it exists and belongs to the user. So the user request.user.underscore ID. The ID is going to be the request.params.to do ID. If there is no to do, the classic return or res dot status five hundred uh, four oh four sorry dot json error could not find to do. And then this time, if we found the to do, we know it belongs to the user. We can just delete it straight away. So we're going to do await to do find one we're not even going to add that to a variable we don't need to add it to a variable because nothing should be returned if we're deleting so we're going to do to do dot find one and remove again so the first parameter we put in here is the query we want to make which is the same as the above up here so user quest user dot id and the uh, ID of the to do is request.params.to do ID. And then this time, we don't want to return something we've just deleted. So we're just going to return res.json. We're going to make a new object and we're just going to send through success as true. So, yeah, we don't need to, we don't want to return an already deleted to do. So let's go and give that a go. So if I uh, first go to current, so I'm going to go to this current tab, which is getting all the current. So you can see that we've got one which is wash the cars and complete here. Um, this is the one we just updated on this tab. I'm now going to mark this. I'm going to put delete. I'm going to change a request from a put request to a delete HTTP request. Hit send and we get a success of true. If I go to the get current, we can send there and you can see that it's no longer incomplete. It has been deleted properly. Okay, perfect. So that pretty much sums up everything that we'll need for our delete, delete um, for our to-dos, updating, creating, marking them as incomplete, deleting them, um, all of that jazz. So before we move on to the client work, I want to first update the auth route. So inside auth, we've got login. And when we log in, we return a token here, um, which is, um, we, we basically assign our access token in the login route. Um, so we create the token with JWT and we add the cookie and whatnot. That's all really good. So I'm going to copy that because we also want to add it. So this whole block here from the payload to where the cookie is set, I want to copy that. And I want to go up to the register route. And I'm also going to add it to the register route underneath where we save the user to the database. This is so that basically when a user registers, we can straight away log them in. We don't have to send them back to a login route for them just to type in the same details again. So at the same time that they register, we're going to set this cookie. The only difference here is that our payload, so all of this can stay the same. This stays exactly as it is, apart from the payload. We've got the user ID on user dot underscore ID. That doesn't exist um, in this function. We want to add that to saved user dot underscore ID. So 
with all test point uh, with all endpoints when you modify them i'm not just going to trust my code i'm going to go and test it so if we go to the register route this is my first tab on um postman if you've already closed the tab don't worry you can go and open it again see i've got no cookies here i'm going to remove the access token um, in the cookies um, block over there and i'm going to create a new user so test2 at test2.com and what I'm expecting to see is when I send this request, a cookie should be set now that after I register. Send the request, so it's created a new user. That's all worked properly. And you can see I now have an access token being set there as well. Okay, so that covers that route. Um, the only thing I also need to add is a logout route. So we've got a login, we've got a register, um, but we don't have a logout. So I'm going to go to the bottom, I'm going to ooh, copy this description here, the root description. I'm going to make a new root. It's going to be a put request. And it's going to be to api slash auth slash logout. And I'm going to um, log out. Uh, log out user and clear the cookie. So it's going to be a router.put request to forward slash log out. It's going to require, we're going to use the requires auth middleware to make sure that the user is currently logged in. There's no point in logging out if they're not logged in. We're going to open up a async request, uh, async function, sorry, with request and response and our classic try catch blocks. Make sure you're adding the semicolons there. So the catch block is going to be error. We're going to console log the error as usual and return res.status500. And send the error dot message. Okay, um, and all we're going to do in this one, it's going to be a really simple route. Is we're just going to do res clear cookie, and we got to pass in inside of quotes the cookie name, which is access dash token. The only way a user is authorized is via an access token, so we want to uh, clear that. And then we're going to return res dot json just success as true to let us know to let the um, to let the user know that their, success, uh, that their um, request was successful. So let me go back to Postman. We can again test this route. So we have a cookie set here. If I open up a new tab, it's going to be a put request to HTTP localhost 5000 forward slash API forward slash auth forward slash logout. So let's double, double check. We've got our cookie set there. I send. I've done. I've sent the request. You can now see that the uh, local the cookie has been removed. If I was to make a private request to the current to dos, I'll get an unauthorized message because the cookie's been removed. So that's essentially what we want to do when we log out a user. And I now think I'm just having a check back over the code, but I think we are now covered on the majority uh, in pretty much all of the API endpoints um, for our a uh, for our API. Um, that means we can now in the next lessons move on to the more exciting stuff and we can move on to the front end. We're going to be creating the React app um, and we can finally start getting some of the API routes uh, being used properly in our application. Um, the first bit will probably be a load of setup. We'll just set up some some styling. We'll um, be creating the React app with create. Uh, we'll be creating a React app with the create React app library. Um, and then from there, we'll, we'll move on. We'll look at um, state management and, and everything else that we need. So thanks for watching this lessons, guy, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.